views expressed on this program are those of the hosts, guests, and callers, and are not necessarily those of this station, its management, or other advertisers. You're listening to Transformation Talk Radio. Welcome to Conscious Confidence Radio, a timeless wisdom with Sarah Maine. Follow host Sarah Maine on her ongoing journey of conscious confidence and gain timeless wisdom to unleash unparalleled confidence. A conscious confidence. Learn to ignite the living spark of wisdom, a new narrative for fulfillment contained in Sanskrit and the ancient, powerful, engaging, and fun conscious conversations to discover your own magnificent true self. Learn to dispel the fear shadow as Sarah provides essential knowledge about embracing change and the power of transformation. Get ready. Conscious Confidence starts now. Welcome, everyone. Welcome to Conscious Confidence Radio. I'm Sarah Main, creator of Conscious Confidence, a timeless wisdom. And today's show is very special because we're going to be talking about the seven steps the seven steps and how to walk them. And we've got a very special guest, Gilbert Main. He's been on the show before, but we were talking about education. But this time we're going to be talking about the seven steps and how to walk them. And Gilbert's going to tell us all about what the seven steps are and how to walk them. Uh, And the reason I got up to wanting to talk about the seven steps and bringing Gilbert on because he is the expert is because in the book, Conscious Confidence, Use the Wisdom of Sanskrit to Find Clarity and Success, and this, this is my book that's just come out, I talk about the essential nature and the pivotal role of core values and positive attitude and then move on to address the whole topic of choice and change and moving from a victimhood um, mindset to a being a victor, so moving from victim to victor. And this brings in the need for transformation and it brings it into stark relief. There needs to be a change, a transformation, and it, it addresses the state of being ready to make a decisive change. So that's the background to how we get up to the seven steps. And then the seven steps outlines this journey and process of transformation and change. And it is a remarkable uh, banquet, if you like. It just spreads the whole system, the whole process of change and transformation. It lays it all out. And I hope that you have some aha moments about this because I learned this when I was um, younger and certainly it has informed all sorts of things in my life where I've been able to understand it in the context of the seven steps. So this knowledge is really useful and it's really profound. And so I'd like to introduce Gilbert. Welcome, Gilbert. Hi. And thank you for coming along. It's a pleasure. Thank you. Thanks for having me. And Gilbert has written a whole book on seven steps, seven steps to freedom. And I know you can probably see but this is the book here. And it's available on Amazon and you can get it as Kindle or as a a hard copy version. But Gilbert wrote a whole book on it and he's going to tell us all about seven steps and how to walk them. So, Gilbert, tell us about the background to how you got interested in the seven steps. Thanks. Okay, sure. What happened was, um, well, as you know, we met together studying meditation, mindfulness, focus, attention, all these sorts of things working uh, under guidance of our teachers and our our gurus to overcome our own sort of limitations, habits, the sorts of things that would block the journey to freedom and happiness and higher consciousness. And part of the teaching, part of the academic curriculum, if if you like, to put it that way, of the organisation of which we were part, the School of Philosophy in Sydney, Uh, was this uh, Doctrine of the Seven Steps. And one of our gurus, Shantananda Saraswati, was asked about this and he said, well, these are the seven steps and he laid them out and said uh, what they were and expounded a bit on them. And I I just found that this came up again and again and I was interested in it. And when it came to be my turn to pass on some of this wisdom to others and to give talks and to 
uh, package up some of this in a way that was interesting for people when I talked about education or even Plato and philosophy and things like that. But the seven steps used to uh, figure quite prominently in my presentations because I just became very interested in this process. Um, so when it came time to write a book, I thought, well, that's a good topic. It, uh, it breaks itself up easily into seven chapters with an introduction and a conclusion. And uh, I knew a bit about it. I had studied it up. I'd looked at the Sanskrit. And, um, and so my first book, which I was published a few years ago, uh, was called Seven Steps to Freedom because that's how I actually experienced uh, walking that path. And where, where are the seven steps derived from? I know we were given an outline of them, but they are in the wisdom tradition. So can you talk a little bit about where they're actually sourced from in those traditions? Sure. The seven steps first appear in a work called the Yoga Vashishta, and this is a record of the conversation between Prince Rama and his uh, guru, uh, Sage Vashishta. Rama was the hero of the Ramayana, which is one of the great Indian epics. His wife Sita is kidnapped by evil Ravana. He and his brother Lakshmana go off to fight the uh, evil demons and the monkey army accompanies them. And this is the way of expressing these seven steps in the form of a gripping and exciting story. But there are also other versions of this same journey uh, and the Yoga Vasishtha is one of them. And in it, Rama, Prince Rama says to his teacher, what are the, se- what are the ways of going through to wisdom, to self-realisation, to happiness, to freedom? And Sage of us, he just says, well, there are seven steps and these are the seven. And he just lays them out very, very briefly, actually. But um, the sages over time spotted this as being a very key uh, part of the teaching. So they have expounded on them in great detail over the, over the years. And so in relation to the problem that we face these days, let's bring it into, you know, our realm of experience, what, what is the actual problem? So we're going to learn about the seven steps and what's going to tell us about them. But what is the actual problem that we're addressing in relation to learning about the seven steps? Well, it's like we ha- we're on a journey and we have to start from somewhere. And the question is, where are we now and where do we start? And why do we even want to take the journey? <clears throat> Pardon me. If you're, in, if you're somewhere and you want to be somewhere else, you have to find a way of, of moving from one place to another. So if you want to be in a state of courage, you want to be in a state of conscious confidence, you want to be in a state of freedom and happiness and clarity, that um, implies that you are in a state of fear, of insecurity, of narrowness, of being bound, of a state of ignorance, a state of not knowing where, uh, what things are going on in your life and what the reason for them is. So if you want to take that journey, that's why you would take the seven steps because they take you from where you are. This is one of the nice things about them. They don't just expound some ideal state of blissful freedom and um, leave you in a position of, of even greater confusion because you don't even know how to get there. It takes you from a starting point of where you actually are. And for most people these days, what we have Sarah and I have both found, I found it as a headmaster of a children's school, was that people are pretty fearful, basically. To put, it, to put it bluntly, they're feeling insecure, they're feeling fearful, and they lack direction. They don't know where to go to find some form of certainty, some form of clear guidance, something that will calm their fears and give them confidence and allow them to move forward. Just to give a very, very easy example, I used to interview obviously parents, but often it was the mothers. And these are the parents of, of the child. They've been, they've gave birth to the child, they've raised the child, they've cleaned it, they've fed it, they've dressed it, they've clothed it. They have performed amazing work by the time the child comes to the school when they were five years old, and yet they're incredibly insecure about their own parenting. And I used to say, well, look, The system we follow is a technical system. It's called MKB. And what that stands for is mother knows best. In other words, not just the mother, obviously father and mother, parents know best. 
whatever their instincts are for the well for the welfare of that child through love and intelligence and reason is going to work. And all I needed to do is say that to supply a certain level of confidence in their choices. Uh, so it's that sort of thing where you get guidance um, and that's a starting point. And the seven steps are a well-credentialed uh, system, pathway, if you like, a series of steps that you can take to get from a state of fear and insecurity, lacking confidence, to a state of freedom and happiness. And have you found knowing about the seven steps useful in your own life? Oh, yeah, yeah. absolutely, yeah. That was one of the reasons I became so interested in it. It wasn't just a mere academic study. I followed I just here's a here's a here's a series of steps. I I walked them. If a, someone tells you this is how to cook a souffle and they produce really good souffles, then you'd be <laughs> um well advised to follow the recipe. And I was um we had some very good souffle cookers in our life um who told us this is what you need to do. <laughs> so following them from step one to through to step seven is um is a, is a highly recommended technique if you actually want this thing to work. Okay, well, we're going to take a break and after the break we're going to go delve into the seven steps, what they are. We'll tell you what the seven steps are, the characteristics of each of the steps and how to get started. And this is the seven steps to freedom or transformation where you go from where you are into uh, to where you want to be, the transformation you want to see and you want to experience because people talk about change all the time. Well, there is a process and the wisdom traditions have got it covered. They laid it all out. It's not guesswork. Um, and we had the benefit of learning about this many years ago and it certainly helped us and it came up to put it into my book and, and I thought, well, rather than just talk about my book and the chapter about seven, the seven steps to transformation and change in my book, Let's get the expert in because Gilbert wrote a whole book just on this topic. Um, so we're going to take a break and then we're going to delve into the seven steps. Can you just give everyone a little taste? What's the in Sanskrit the first step? Well, the first step in Sanskrit is called Shubhech Cha. And what does that mean? Shubhech Cha is the good impulse is one way it's um, translated. It means that you hear something good something good is suggested to you from an authoritative uh, source and you nod in agreement to it. You think, "Uh aha, yeah, mm, that sounds good. So something good is presented and you say, yep, that's, that's, I'm going to do that. That's the first step. It's quite an easy one. So Shubhet Cha, we're going to start with Shubhet Cha after the break and then we're going to get into the other seven steps as well. So stay tuned for Good Impulse and we'll see you soon. Sanskrit is not just a language to be written and spoken, but it is a doorway to gaining understanding of how we experience life and truth. Conscious Confidence is a book written by Sanskrit scholar Sarah Main. The stories Sarah shares will take you on a journey of understanding how the power of this ancient language is not only still relevant, but can truly transform your everyday life. Drawing upon the deeper meanings behind the Sanskrit words for confidence, Sarah Main outlines principles for harnessing the fourfold energy of conscious confidence. Focusing, uniting, simplifying, and energizing. Not just a book, a life guide. Available now on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, Inner Traditions. You can find all of those links on ConsciousConfidence.com. Your favorite Transformation Talk radio shows are now on Spotify. Simply search out your favorite host or show by name, tap the subscribe button, and boom! With over 150 million active monthly users on Spotify, Transformation Talk radio is thrilled to expand our reach so you never have to miss an episode. Well, what the heck are you waiting for? Log into Spotify and subscribe now. Are you done being afraid to jump into the life that's waiting for you? Are you ready for a real shift? I invite you to tune in every Tuesday with me, Tracy L, on the Tracy L. Clark Show, where we will teach you how to live your extraordinary life. 
at 8 a.m. Pacific on Transformation Talk Radio, where I will provide the tools and the steps needed to help you transcend perceived limitations and move forward with an extraordinary life. For more information, visit me at tracylclark.com. Hi, this is Kimberly Carlson, and I would love for you to tune in to All In Healing Radio, where together we will begin to experience health, happiness, and harmony in all areas and aspects of life. Join us every first Tuesday of the month at 11 a.m. on TransformationTalkRadio.com. All In Healing will help you release layers of negative beliefs and energies for radiant health, deep joy, and greater abundance. Visit me at KimberlyCarlson.com. Welcome back, everyone. Welcome back to Conscious Confidence Radio. I'm Sarah Main, and this is Gilbert Main, my husband. Yes, he's my husband and expert in today's topic, which is the seven steps and how to walk them. And these are the seven steps uh, to transformation, the, the process of the seven steps of change or transformation. And I asked Gilbert to come join me today in today's show because Gilbert's the expert on this because he wrote a whole book on it. My book, Conscious Confidence, Use the Wisdom of Sanskrit to Find Clarity and Success, has one chapter on the seven steps. Gilbert has a whole book on it and it's a fascinating book, absolutely marvellous. It's available on Amazon. He wrote it 10 years ago, so it's been around a while. And naturally, I had to call on him because he's got such a depth of knowledge about this topic. And in the first segment, we were just introducing the background to the seven steps um, a little bit and where it fits in the wisdom traditions and what it is. But now we're going to go in depth into each of the seven steps. And I thought Gilbert would read where the passage actually is from the Yoga Vasishta, which is the uh, wisdom tradition from which the seven steps is taken. So do you want to read that first? So this is from Yoga Vasishta, and this is where Prince Rama asks Vasishta where, how to find freedom, how to find wisdom. And Vasishta replies, he says, I shall now describe to you, O Rama, the seven states or planes of wisdom. Knowing them, you will not be caught in delusion. Pure wish or intention is the first, that's Shubhet's char, which we talked about at the end of the first segment. Inquiry is the second. The third is when the mind becomes subtle. Establishment in truth is the fourth. Total freedom from attachment or bondage is the fifth. The sixth is cessation of objectivity. And the seventh is beyond all these. So hence Yoga Vasishta. Right. So they're the seven steps laid out. So what are the seven steps? Can you now tell us what the seven steps are? Let's okay. go from one to seven. And we'll have them in Sanskrit and then... Can you just, just give a brief dis- description? Because okay, the Sanskrit may not be meaningful to everyone. So we had Shubhaj Char at the end of the previous segment. So Shubhaj Char is the first one. That is the good impulse. The second one is uh, Suvicharana is the one way of describing it, which is true inquiry. And the third one is Tanumanasa. The fourth one is Satwapati. Then you have Asang Sakti. The uh, last, sixth one is Padartha Bahawani. And the last one is Turiya. Okay. So that's Shubhecha, Suicharana, Tanumanasa, Satwapati, Asang Sakti, Padartha Bahawani, um, and, Turiya. and Turiya. So they're the seven steps in Sanskrit. So let's just go back over them and outline the process. I've given them description in my book and you've, in your book, Seven Steps to Freedom, yeah. um, you, you've given a particular way of describing them so as well, which is slightly different from mine. Yeah. So the first one, Shubhech Cha, is the actual word is good impulse. Yeah. Shubha means something good or beneficial and each cha is a verb meaning to agree to nod to to um, nod in agreement so someone comes along to you and says look you're looking a bit overweight you should go on a diet and you go yeah I think that's probably yeah I think there's probably something in that you've done step one step one's done so I, I wrote a, a story which um, Sarah 
uh, put in her book. And because I was a teacher, we were both teachers of young children, a lot of what we do, we do in the form of stories. And uh, the story is called The City of Seven Gates. And it starts this way. It says, one day a man wanting freedom heard that he would find it in the city of seven gates. He set out on the road looking for that wonderful city. After searching for a long time, he came to a fertile valley. In that valley was a beautiful city surrounded by seven walls, each pierced by a single gate. He had found the city of seven gates. At the first gate, he asked, what must I do to pass through this gate? You have already fulfilled the task, said the gatekeeper. Having been told of the city of seven gates, you set out to find it. Arriving here is the test of the first gate. The seeker passed through the first gate into the city. Right. So it's that ascent. It's that saying yes. It's saying yes to a suggestion by someone who knows what they're talking about, a tennis coach, a French teacher, someone who's teaching you teaching you how to do a souffle and you go, yeah, that makes sense, I'll try that out. You don't know anything yet, you haven't done it, you haven't practised your forehand, you haven't started learning French verbs or conversation, you haven't got the ingredients for the souffle yet but you have decided that you are going to give it a go. It's made sense to you. And in some ways this is the first step is quite an easy one because it makes sense and the... But it does require you to do something. It isn't all from the outside. You have to assent. You have to agree. And, well, it's, it sounds easy, but also you have to get yourself into a position where you know you need guidance, where you want to sign up for the cooking program, where, in our case, you want to go free. You understand that you are insecure and fearful and lack direction and you need to find guidance. This is your first understanding. And then you go in search of that guidance. And I spend a lot of time in my book talking about how do you actually find that guidance. And a good way of starting on that is simply to ask. Even if no one else is around, put the question to yourself, put the question to the universe, how can I find a guide? How can I get out of this? How can I find someone who will give me direction? And if you're looking at this program, you're looking at a source of the uh, wisdom anyway, because both of us had enormous help in our way and we've both written books to try to capture the things that our teachers taught us. And so this, this pivotal point of change starts with the good impulse where it can be anything. You can turn on the TV and, and someone says something that connects with you so you're open and receptive, mm. something's searching something some, something in you is wanting that change and then you sort of suddenly wake up and once you hear it or see it you can't unhear it or unsee it mm. is a, there is a shift yeah um in the way i describe it in my book is inspiration and um we're inspired to transform and the, the way i've described it we're, we're inspired to transform from where we are to where we want to be to be something greater, a desire for change arises and we decide to take action. And um, a great uh, yoga teacher, Patanjali, he spoke about the power of inspiration and that was back somewhere in the 2nd to 4th century AD, BCE. I mean, the wisdom traditions have been talking about this for a long, long time in great clarity and great detail. So first step is Shubhetscha. Now, tell us about the second step, suicharana. Suicharana means true inquiry. That's one way of, of translating it. And true inquiry, we think of inquiry as a, something sort of academic where you look into something, you study it up, you read about it, you think about it. But true inquiry is a transformative stage where you take information and you turn it into experience and understanding and ultimately knowledge and wisdom. So there's quite a lot happening at stage two. In fact, in some ways, stage two is where all the action's happening, Mm -hmm. where everything that you can do is done, and then the other stages sort of take care of themselves, which is actually quite good news because you actually don't have to do seven steps. The first step is you simply nodding and saying, yes, okay, I will sign up for that course, I will read that book, I will study what you have to say. And then the second step is where all the work is done. You study the teaching. You put it into practice, you assess your own experience, how did it work, 
what actually happened was what the guru was saying true, what the teacher, the master, the mistress, whoever you're listening to, you're assessing for yourself what their teaching involves and slowly you're beginning to assimilate their teaching into your being and you're transforming, you're changing already. If their teaching is how to go from fear to fearlessness, from insecurity to confidence, from cowardice to courage, then naturally you're undertaking a process of transformation by inquiring in a reasonable, focused, attentive, conscious way into the teaching of these teachers. That's so, Suicharana. Suicharana. So it's a, it's a dynamic situation mm. and you're fully engaged. It's not a passive thing where someone's just telling you what to do. You actually have to do it, don't you? Yeah. And put it into practice and as you say, assess your own experience and how it's going, and that will naturally bring up more questions. Mm. So you, you're this further inquiry and you're delving down and then you practice that. Um, it's not random, but there's definitely, and there's definitely a process of inquiry and exploration. It will be a bit different. The experience will be different for everybody. Yes. Because everyone, you need to engage at this, engage with the transformation yourself. It's, it, you're on this journey yourself. Yeah. And the, you the, need company, though. Can you talk about that? Well, what I was going to say was also the first and second steps do have this, well, it's not a negative, of the, um, it's actually quite a positive, but it does divide you. You are your habitual, normal self with all of the baggage that you bring, the limitations. Suddenly there's light shone on all of that. And so the first and second steps can appear to be a bit up and down, a bit turbulent, and a bit, and you and you can in fact appear to go through even deeper insecurities and maybe even a deeper sort of darkness because suddenly you're confronted with your own limitations and hence the need for good company, which what you mm. people on the way, um, teachers, guides, and people who are also treading that journey, which is one of the reasons why it's not a bad idea to sign up for say an organisation or a, or a school. But at the same, or just keep good books, good music, good art, good literature around you and people you can call on to help you. So between the first and second steps, now we've got um, the third step. We're up to the third step, which is Tanamanasa. And we're going to take a break and come back, talk about Tanamanasa, because that finishes off the final section of the first three steps. So after this break, we'll come back and we'll talk about Tanamanasa, which is the third step in the seven steps. We'll be right back. Sanskrit is not just a language to be written and spoken, but it is a doorway to gaining understanding of how we experience life and truth. Conscious Confidence is a book written by Sanskrit scholar Sarah Main. The stories Sarah shares will take you on a journey of understanding how the power of this ancient language is not only still relevant, but can truly transform your everyday life. Drawing upon the deeper meanings behind the Sanskrit words for confidence, Sarah Main outlines principles for harnessing the fourfold energy of conscious confidence, focusing, uniting, simplifying, and energizing. Not just a book, a life guide. Available now on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, Inner Traditions, you can find all of those links on ConsciousConfidence.com. Your money is your creational energy. When you feed your wealth back into what you love, it signals your choices and returns to you. Tune in to Money Momentum with host Karen Baines and learn the truth about the widely misunderstood creative energy that is the cash in your pocket. Realign the things you can't see to get the results you can see. Listen every month for a whole new hour on how to get the money already aligned to who you are. For more information on Karen and Money Momentum, visit soulwhispers.uk. The vibration of change, that magical place where life shifts from struggle to ease, from stagnation to forward movement, from old ways of being to new ways of becoming. If you're like I am, it can be rather elusive to get there, but when you are in it, you feel it down to your very core, don't you? And it can positively affect everything in your life, from your relationships to your health and well-being, from your career path to your abundance. From the quality of that inner connection to the fullness of your self-expression. 
On the Christine Upchurch Show, we explore ways to get into that vibration of change with experts in the fields of consciousness, psychology, spirituality, health, healing, and science. Join me, Christine Upchurch, every Friday at 11 a.m. Pacific Time, 2 p.m. Eastern Time on KKNW AM 1150 and Transformation Talk Radio and learn new ways to step into your vibration of change. Welcome back, everyone. Welcome back to Conscious Confidence Radio. I'm Sarah Main, and this is Gilbert Main. He's my husband, and he's the author of Seven Steps to Freedom. Um, and I got asked Gilbert to come and speak today because he wrote a whole book on a topic. My book, I've only got one chapter on the seven steps, and Gilbert wrote a whole book on it. <laughs> and... And we thought it would be um, a good opportunity to talk about this in more detail and spend a whole show on it Um, because the seven steps is a crucial bit of information you need about the process of transformation and change. Otherwise, it just seems random, all these things are happening. But there is actually a process and the wisdom tradition set it out. And and, and the the wisdom tradition specifically that Gilbert um, drew from for his book and I did for the chapter in my book is from the Yoga Vasishta. And so in the previous segments, we talked about the first step, which is Shubhecha, the good impulse that gets the process going, the inspiration, something new comes in and you go, aha, and you sort of say yes to it and it's an ascent. And then the second step is Suicharana, which is the inquiry. In my book, I describe it as application. There's inquiry, there's action. You follow guidance for new knowledge and it takes some effort um, and you need good company uh, and you need to engage with people doing the same sort of thing as you and interested in the same sort of thing because it's very difficult to do that step on its own, on your own and on its own. You you need the support, the company, and you'll find yourself naturally gravitating to people who are interested in the same things that you are interested in and you want to talk about them because this is new and you're discovering new things. And it takes effort. This is where the real work, so to speak, takes place. So now we're up to the third step, Tanumanasa in Sanskrit. Can you talk about Tanumanasa? Sure. Tanumanasa is a stage where the mind begins to thin and uh, go on a bit of a diet. Uh, Tanu is where we get words like tenuous or attenuate in English. And it means, well, it's a bit confronting. It means to starve or to um, to go on a diet, basically, to make thinner. And manasa is the Sanskrit word for mind. So what that means in practice is you're limiting... Uh, negative, the troublesome aspects of your being, of your mind, the things that um, there's the negative self-talk, the insecurities, the fears, the things we talked about before, these are these become thinner. These become less powerful. They begin to fade away. And they do that through the process of steps one and two. You hear something, you go, that sounds reasonable. You put it into practice. You inquire into it reasonably. And it begins to become part of your nature. And the way that happens is your habits change. So bad habits are replaced by better habits and better habits are replaced by even better habits than that until finally you have the best habits. And these become part of your your daily life. So Tanumanasar is a stage of thinning, thinning of the mind. The negative falls away the heaviness drops away and what you're left with is a sort of clarity, freedom, a sense of space, uh, a sense where the mind becomes part of your repertoire, it becomes part of your toolbox where you can use reason, you can use your intellect, you can use memory and also the monkey mind begins to become quieter and begins to become more in order so that you can move forward and take all the rest of the steps, steps four, five, six, and ultimately seven as well. Right. So this, it, I find this um, Tanamanasa such an interesting description, this mm. attenuation of the mind, the thinning of the mind. And um, 
you can see that in your own experience if you, you, you get an inspiration or an idea to start something and then you have to work at it. And at first it's sort of fairly, you know, what gr grunt work. You're, you're working at a, at a fairly coarse, low level, just learning things, making a lot of mistakes and you need the mistakes. That's how you learn and you're assessing your own experience, mm. asking more questions, learning more, and it goes on. And then there's a certain point where you've learned enough that you you don't need to, to make all those mistakes. You've made a lot of them. People say a good way of learning is to is to fail quickly, <laughs> you know, get through the learning of mm. mistakes and it's a necessary process. And we were both teachers for 30 years, so we, we recognise that process well in our students and in ourselves. Mm. Um, and you get to this point where it's it's a much more disciplined, the, the discipline is emerging within yourself yeah. and you suddenly find you, you can do whatever you've set out to do. At a level, you, you suddenly think, hey, I, I'm doing this, I can do this. Mm. And, and that is, a, is a, a golden time, it's a blessed time, but it, it does require the work in order to get to that point. Mm. And I, I think one thing we learned from teaching and in our own experience is the, the quality of persistence, just keeping on regardless of how difficult it is. Just keeping on is very important in mm. this uh, phase, in these first three phases, because you need to refresh the inspiration yeah. so that it doesn't wane. You need the company, you need the knowledge, uh, you need the inquiry, you need the effort, and then you need to go back and practice again. You need that whole process and to, to reach a point where things start um, refining enough mm. um, that you suddenly think, yes, I can do this. Yeah. yeah. Can you talk about that persistence? Yes, yeah, so the one of the ways of uh, the technical term for it is called task commitment, which is sort of self self explanatory. You just need to stick at it, and we all know this. This isn't um, this isn't a mystery. This isn't a spiritual concept. This is the same with learning anything new. As I say, tennis, um, French, whatever. You need to actually stick at something, and the reason you need to stick at it is because you have got a state. Of, you don't, you're not a blank slate. You come with habits, you come with limitations, you come with um, sort of grooves that you've already um, um, carved deeply into your heart and into your mind, and you need to fill in some grooves and re-carve others. You need to basically change, and change is a process. Change requires uh, choice. You need to choose to change, and then you need to actually do something. And as I said, the first two stages can throw up distractions can throw up blockages and it's a it's a commonplace thing that when you start on something a lot of people leave projects half finished or three quarters finished or even nine tenths finished because in the end it's there's a certain resistance to change that is that is there's an inertia in our being and tanu manasa is a descriptive sort of state where you get to a point where those habits those limitations those blockages are thinning they're beginning to give way and sometimes it can be quite, um, you can think, oh, I'm fighting, I'm fighting, I'm fighting, I'm getting nowhere, I'm getting nowhere. And all of a sudden you break through and you're in this free state in something you've been studying. Some, some day you suddenly realise, now I can do it. Yes, I've got through to that stage. And that's Tanu Manasa. It's only stage three, so uh, but it is a very important stage because it also holds out a certain promise of freedom, of ultimate freedom, you're now beginning to experience for yourself the fruits of your own work. And it's really, really, really important to know that so that you're encouraged to keep going even further up to uh, steps four, five, six and seven. Right. So mm. we've got inspiration, application, and let's call, I, I describe it as assimilation in, mm. in my book as another way. So we've got these three steps and these are the absolute foundation of it all. And then um, there's this need for continuation, for persistence. You need to keep going uh, and need to re-energise uh, um, and persevere uh, because we, we've got to work, over, work through the limiting habits and complacency that can reassert themselves and derail the process and progress can stop. So assuming we keep going... Then we reach the fourth stage, which is satwapati. Can you talk about that? Illumination. Illumination. Satwapati is the word satwa in Sanskrit is a really interesting word. We get our words like satisfaction from that word. 
Sattva is a description of a state of consciousness which is clear and mindful. This is mindfulness. This is where mindfulness lives. This is where meditation, the state of um, inner um, peace, calm. This is which um, where people. This is the consummation devoutly to be wished. The Shakespeare describes it, and it is a, like a platform. It's a transformation of being. Now you're a new person at level four. You've really come through a lot of the work and the um, heavy lifting that has to be done at one and two. The attenuation of the mind has taken place gradually over time, and then you're left clear of some of the ballast. Your your hot air balloon is now flying. You've thrown the sandbags out of the basket, and you're up in the air now, and you've, you're seeing the world in a very very different way. And sattva is that state of consciousness. It's described in, by some people as swan energy. It's that calm, peaceful sort of consciousness that um, allows you to know yourself to, to the degree that you can and to know others. And it's a pivotal point because you're no longer really looking back at the first three steps, which are like the first three gates of the, of the city. Now you're looking forward to the, to the last three, Four is a very pivotal point, and it's like a platform. Usually at this point, you've, it's not easy to fall backwards. Your habits have really given way, and you're now ready to take the final steps to freedom. And, and that's really this indication of transformation. You're not battling against old habits. Mm. There is a transformation into a new level of being. Um, mm. And you're in a position to teach others. Yeah. You, you can become, at this stage, you have enough experience and, and, and of the wisdom of your te- your own teachers to be able to turn around and, and reach out a helping hand to anyone else who needs help. So we're going to take a short break and when we come back, we'll just finish off steps five, six and seven, which really take care of themselves and the effort is different. It's the difference of an effort like this to an effort like that. It, it changes in the final steps. And we'll go, uh, after the break, we'll go to a break now and then we will come back and cover off on the final three steps and then talk about the practical application of this in our lives, the seven steps to freedom. So we'll be right back. Conscious Confidence Radio, a timeless wisdom with Sarah Main. Tune in each month on Transformation Talk Radio and join Sarah on an adventurous journey to the deeper level of meaning to move beyond today's world of constant change, confusion, and uncertainty beyond the shadow of fear. This hit show explores key concepts such as confidence, values, and attitude in a dynamic way. To learn more about Sarah and her work, visit sarahmain.com. Listen while you work. Streaming live on any device. Tune in to the Transformation Radio Network. Visit transformationradio.fm. How many times do you find yourself saying, it was nothing, or just doing my job, when really you knocked it out of the park? How did you get like this? Next time someone tells you great job, you'll know how to accept it and not deflect it by listening to Courage to be Seen Radio with host Sherry Clark. Sherry Clark is an experienced global engineering leader, coach, and mentor. From her experiences one-on-one coaching to corporate consulting and executive coaching, Sherry has learned many women need at least three things to discover and face success. Learn about the ACES program, how to survive male-dominated fields with grace and authenticity, and reach the top without ever once giving up on who you are. Courage to be Seen host Sherry Clark explores the awesome power of your entire self and how far you can go by being more you. Check out her website, CourageToBeSeen.com. You have the courage to be seen. See you later. Welcome back, everyone. Welcome back to our conversation today on the seven steps and how to walk them with my guest Gilbert Main, author of Seven Steps to Freedom. And we've been talking about the seven steps to freedom or transformation drawn from the Yoga Vasishta, the wisdom tradition. And we got up to, the, we just took, finished in the previous segment on the fourth step. So we've done Chithejcha, Suvichara, Natang, Manasa, and Satwapati, the inspiration, application, assimilation, and illumination so they're the first four steps and then we're going to talk about now 
if you wouldn't mind talking about the, the final three steps. Sure. The final three steps are um, Asang Sakti, Adarta Bahawani, and Turiya. And they're tricky because they're so subtle and they're so, um, you can describe them all, but they're in a way you're trying to describe the indescribable. Really, the consciousness is now beginning to take over, beginning to guide your life. To give one example, at level five, for example, what is said is there's a state where you see the whole world as your family. You see all the men, all the women, all the children as your brothers, as your sisters, as your wives and daughters, as your as your own children. And that's a genuine state. It isn't an idealised state. You simply see everybody as bound by the love of the of a single family. That is now that's just obviously a and, wonderful state. And as mother and father. Mother and father too. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. And everyone is your teacher at that point too. You sort of transcend the need for formal the formalities of teaching. And um, Sarah has a wonderful story in her book of a lady who was running to see a guru who was in town and she tripped and fell and she was on the street and a truck screeched to a halt and the driver glared at her and in the conversation with Sarah, this lady realised that the teacher in that situation was the truck driver and that she learnt an enormous amount about her own need to look for externals and and began to discover the teacher was actually inside in her heart. Um, this is a wonderful state. So Asang Sakti is a very beautiful state to be in. The Dharata Bahawani is a state where you just simply don't see differences. Everything is one thing. All love is love, all, all the different loves that you see of a mother for a child, of a, an enthusiast for a sports team, that you, all you see is the love. You don't see the differences anymore. And uh, again, it's a, it's a beautiful state uh, to be in, and it takes care of itself. There's no effort here. This is you perhaps want to talk about that change of effort. Yeah, the, the first three, um, well, the description we were taught, and it's certainly within the experience, is that that the first three steps, the the effort, there's a, there's a firm, decisive um, effort and approach and a focus, and then from step. Four, which is Satwa Pati, the effort changes from this to this. So you're holding firm to a discipline and then there's a surrender. And it's all about surrender, surrender, as you mentioned, to the consciousness. Mm. So it is completely different. And in a way, um, both of us, we have been careful in our books about not over-describing this because it is not a matter of the mind anymore. If there is a surrender there and the consciousness directs the whole thing. Mm. And you have to be very, very careful that you can fool yourself um, about this with the mind controlling it all and that's not what it, it's about. It is about surrender in the moment. Um, so we've kept a light touch on how we've described it in our books. Uh, but there's this penetration and a detachment, an invulnerable and unmoved deepening of the transformation that's how I've sort of described it in my book and then the dissolution where separation has dissolved and no differences exist and that is genuine and abiding it's not created in the mind that is a, a mm. real lived experience and abiding one too and then completion is just pure limitless freedom and to realize no yeah. and there's nothing to be said about that really it's not um, really a state it's not a state so the first three steps are the, the crucial ones and mm. then the rest really take care of themselves the, the focus needs to be on shubhecha the inspiration then suvicharana the application and then tanamanasa the assimilation mm. and then the illumination and penetration dissolution and completion all take care of themselves and this process of Description is it's applicable obviously to the transformation of consciousness, mm. but also in the way we um, create something or act in an everyday way. So, mm. can you talk about the application of that in, in everyday life? Well, in everyday life, if you want to build a cubby house for your children, you get the inspiration. You begin to find, get plans and, um, and a diagram and you look it up on the internet and gather your tools 
and then you begin to act and build the thing and then it begins to take shape and then as you go through the the, the final thing is you've got the completed uh, thing that you project that you embarked upon so as a practical matter uh, in life uh, the uh, seven steps start with finding realizing you have something that you want to somewhere you want to be that you haven't got there yet finding a teacher and in our case a teacher of consciousness a teacher of confidence a teacher of of courage and and uh, awareness and then studying their teaching and and making it part of your own life so finding a teacher doing what they say making it part of your own life right that's, that's nice and simple and practical so <laughs> you've written a whole book tell us tell us where you can find um your book how can oh, well, people get your book oh it's on amazon you can get it as a Kindle or you can get the hard copy. You go to Amazon, look up my name or look up Seven Steps to Freedom and you'll find um, this, well, several of my books, but this is one of them. And speaking of several of his books, Gilbert has written other books as well. Oh, yes. Um, he's got a website. So what's your website? Gilbertmain.com. So that's G-I-L-B-E-R-T-M-A-N-E.com, Gilbertmain.com. Yep. yep. And we Quickly, are. tell us about your books. Well, I moved on to writing novels, partly as Sarah suggested I do, and I thought, well, okay, and so I gave it a go, and uh, this is my first novel. The second one has come back from the editor, and the third one's well underway. It's a rollicking good read. It's a conspiracy thriller, <laughs> but it does have, you might, you might, if you read it, find a few elements of the seven steps embedded in there. Right. And, he, and Gilbert also, um, in a back in our educational career, wrote a chapter in a book called Education mm. and the Ideal and he wrote a chapter on um, education and... That chapter's on Amazon And that chapter well. is on Amazon as uh, well. Um, how Noble in Reason. How Noble in Reason. So there's some interesting things. Gilbert's got a broad range of interests and writes beautifully. So it's well worth going to Amazon and, and searching for him, Gilbert Main, and seeing the things that he's written because they're all available there. And my book, Conscious Confidence, Use the Wisdom of Sanskrit to Find Clarity and Success, is out now. There it is. Ta-da. Very happy with that. And that's out now on Amazon. Um, if you go there, you can find it and um, check it out. It's available on Kindle and in uh, hard copy, as you can see. And there is an audio book, which is coming out soon as well. So conscious confidence use the wisdom of Sanskrit to find clarity and success. And I'm also on social media. You can find me on Facebook and Instagram. So go and check me out there. There's, there's content there. Follow me. Ask me any questions. Drop me a, a comment on something on one of the posts. Uh, ask me a question. I'm delighted when I get questions. I love that sort of thing. Go to my website consciousconfidence.com, consciousconfidence.com, and that's where you can find out more about Conscious Confidence, the work that I do. There's um, a link to more radio podcasts that I've done. There's a tab on the website. So there's plenty of material to learn about Conscious Confidence and how the wisdom in Sanskrit, and you'll notice that we've been referring to Sanskrit as we've gone along, the wisdom in Sanskrit can give you all sorts of knowledge and help and guidance and deepen your understanding and that will enrich your life. And so to finish off, I've, um, I usually finish each show with a bit of Sanskrit and today I'm going to sing the perfect prayer, which is a beautiful prayer. That is perfect. This is perfect. Perfect comes from perfect. Take perfect from perfect. The remainder is perfect. May peace and peace and peace be everywhere. Om Purnamada Purnamidam Purnat Purnamudachate Purnasya Purnamadaya Purnameva Vashishyate Om Shanti 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 so thanks for listening, and we'll see you next time. Thank you for listening to Conscious Confidence with Sarah Main. Join us next month on Transformation Talk Radio for more timeless wisdom with Sarah's exciting and innovative approach to living. Discover more joy, freedom, and step into your limitless potential. For more information on Sarah Main and her work, 
or to listen to past shows, visit sarahmain.com.